you want to climb a mountain, you got to be willing to fall some. And um, I think that's what this football team's willing to do. That's what I'm willing to do, and we're going to keep climbing. Russell Wilson is not washed. Okay, I know. Yes. I know. And I, I know, I know. Last season was a nightmare for Broncos fans. But there were also plays like this. And like this. And like this. That give me a glimmer of hope. I will not deny that Russell Wilson had a bad year in 2022. Maybe not just a bad year, a terrible year. In 15 starts, Wilson won just four games and had career lows with 16 touchdown passes, a passer rating of 84, 61 completion percentage, and a league leading 55 sacks taken, which he was able to achieve and like I said, only 15 games, magnified by the giant price the Broncos paid to acquire him. In spite of everything I just told you, I'm going to explain in this video why Russell Wilson is not washed, is not trash, will high knee wherever he wants with success, and can do it while being fueled by Subway. And it's dangerously good. I've got a handful of big reasons, four or five I believe, uh, as to why Russell Wilson will bounce back and return to the Russ of old in 2023. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by manscaped.com slash good sports. Father's Day is coming up, and it's time your dad knows that you are thinking about his hygiene and his body hair. I've already given my dad the lawnmower 4.0 for Father's Day. No clue if he uses it because I don't ask my dad about his pubes. I've given him the Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear hair trimmer, which I knows he uses. <laughs> and you can get your dad both with the performance package for Father's Day. Recently, my dad copied me and grew a beard. Recently, Manscaped added the Beard Hedger Beard Trimmer, and this is 100% what my dad's getting this upcoming Father's Day. Now, I use the Hedger every week for my beard, and its zoom wheel allows you to easily switch to 20 different beard lengths, and its titanium-coated T-blade cuts through the thickest of hair with ease. My dad is new to having a beard, so this is the one area I can teach him a thing or two since I've had mine for a decade now. Use my link below. Go to manscaped.com slash good sports for 20% off plus free international shipping. As a heads up, I will be dropping a Why Russ is Washed episode in a couple days. Uh, obviously, that's the easy argument to make. This was the tougher video to make. But there's evidence here to show why Russ not only could, but should have a bounce back season in 2023. But I wanted to do two separate videos to kind of illustrate the point that you could make either argument, and this applies to any sports argument, and hopefully kind of emphasizes how stupid sports debate is, because you can take either side and you can find enough examples to support your case. Skip. That said, let's start with the biggest reason why Russ fell off a cliff like Homer Simpson in 2023, hitting every rock and branch on the way down, and it is Nathaniel Hackett. I'll be your running back for you. Sorry, Nate Dog, but this is the most obvious reason Russell Wilson struggled in 2022. In in Russell Wilson's first decade in Seattle, he never had to go through a coaching change. Pete Carroll was there the entire time. Pete Carroll, in my opinion, is a future Hall of Fame coach, hopefully after Mike Shanahan, and he was the one who gave Russ his first chance as a rookie. Even though the ink on the Matt Flynn $26 million contract still wasn't dry. Now imagine going from one of the best head coaches of all time to one of the most incompetent ever. Nathaniel Hackett was simply not ready to be a head coach in the NFL. He's a good offensive coordinator. He's a nice guy. He's buddies with Aaron Rodgers. And he's got that weird facial hair that only a coordinator should have. But... It was apparent from his very first game in Denver that he was in way, way, way over his head. If Hackett had just kept the offense on the field instead of opting for a 64-yard field goal to beat Seattle, uh, Russ very well could have vanquished his old team and Wilson might not have been the butt 
of every single joke in 2022. Russ playing poorly was the worst reminder that Twitter trolls are the least original people on earth. Come up with a new fucking joke, guys. Either way, Nathaniel Hackett wasn't an experienced or competent leader in any regard. I think we all believe he gave Russ way too much free reign in the building uh, and didn't have the personality to challenge him when things got tough. But that's what Russ wanted, right? It's why he wanted to leave Seattle. Russell Wilson needs a Pete Carroll type who knows that they are in charge, knows when to call a fucking timeout, and uh, doesn't let the play clock run down to zero. Something a younger, less experienced coach had no issues with down in Miami in Mike McDaniel. Clock, 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 clock. Nice. Mike McDaniel never needed the crowd to call out the play clock for him like Hackett had in week two. Game management was such an issue in Denver uh, that they brought in a coach to specifically manage the game for Nathaniel Hackett. Thank God for that man, Jerry Rossberg. He gave Denver a look at what they could turn into with the right type of leader at the helm. Hackett, of course, was fired and in Denver's two games, under their interim head coach, Wilson combined for five total touchdowns, nearly beat the Chiefs on the road, and then came back and whacked a Chargers team that was actually trying for some reason with the playoffs clinched. And against LA, Russ had a passer rating of 119 and averaged 12 yards per attempt. His rollout pass to Jerry Judy looked like vintage Russell Hustle and Bustle Man Muscle Wilson, showing us that all the traits that made him so good in Seattle were still there and ready to be un unleashed upon the world once again. Now the team was notably better under Rosberg. And let's assume Sean Payton is as good as a lifetime special teams coach. And that Sean Payton is going to establish a culture that will remind Russell Wilson that he's not the guy with his own office and his own coaches and his own brand. He's just one of 53 guys coming together to play some winning football. Payton spent most of his career coaching up a shorter QB in Drew Brees. And I think his system will be tailored to fit Russell's strengths and eliminate his weaknesses, things like throwing into the middle of the field, you know, which Russ doesn't do well, getting out of the pocket, and most importantly, leaning on a run game with two tight ends. What? Run the ball! In summation about the coaching, Wilson is going from the worst head coach in the NFL, with all due respect to Josh McDaniels, to an elite leader. That's going to be a huge boost. Nearly as huge as Sean Payton's penis. You knew it was coming, guys. You ain't never seen nobody with a long dick! Point two, injuries affected Wilson and the Broncos. Injuries have plagued the Denver Broncos for what feels like close to a decade at this point, and it got silly just how hurt the Broncos were in 2022. They were one of the most injured teams multiple times throughout the season, if not the most, and it affected key players. And you might as well start with the QB himself. Now, Russell Wilson only missed two games, but he did suffer a concussion in a game where he could have beat the Chiefs. He suffered a partially torn hamstring and underwent a procedure on his throwing shoulder. And as you know, you need your throwing shoulder to throw good. You also need your hamstring to run good. And you need your brain to think about where you're going to throw good and run good. I also think Wilson was generally in less than peak physical shape last season. A little heavy, if you will. Uh, there seems to be a renewed emphasis on conditioning under Sean Payton, which should not only reduce injuries but keep them playing well late in games, which was obviously a problem several times, if not every time last year. And if the NFL should decide to replace footballs with snakes, Russell Wilson will be ready to be a Hall of Famer. But let's talk about the team-wide injury, specifically on offense. It seemed like losing receiver Tim Patrick to a torn ACL was the canary in the coal mine for this team, and that all preceded a massive list of injuries to come, starting with running back Javante Williams, who basically tore his entire knee off week four against the Raiders. KJ Hamler was a deep threat when he was on the field, but he only played in parts of seven games, catching just seven passes. Garrett Bull, starting left tackle, missed most most of the season with the torn ACL. Greg Dulcich, your rookie tight end, was great when on the field, but he missed a total of eight games as a rookie. Melvin Gordon, 
what was wasn't injured, but he played like his fingers were fucking broken. Okay, on defense, Ron Darby went down. Kwan Williams played corner with the club on his hand. Randy Gregory was still a Dallas Cowboy, as far as I'm concerned. And of course, they moved on from Bradley Chubb midseason, which led to Sean Payton. In total, the Broncos placed 21 players on IR, nearly enough for a starting offense and defense. Uh, The defense adapted because of excellent coaching on that side of the ball, but the offense didn't have the continuity working through three different play callers, working through countless injuries, etc., etc. Everything about the team's medical staff and training staff is different. I have to believe the swooping changes uh, in that department will help this team be healthier moving forward. My next point, it wasn't just Russell Wilson underperforming. It happened across the board. And when that happens on any team in any sport, the results are bad. But I'll let former Broncos lineman Billy Turner explain in a couple uh, sound bites exactly what I'm talking about. You know, it's easy to point the finger at Nathaniel Hackett or Russell Wilson and blame them for the reason our season ended up the way that it did. But it's not entirely either of those people's fault. I'm not going to sit here and point blame at any individual person. I was a part of that offense. I was a part of that team. I was a part of the problem. And we just could not figure out how to gel on the field. We couldn't figure out how to get our mojo, so to speak, and figure out how to move the ball and be efficient on offense. And again, that is not on Nathaniel Hackett. That is not on Russell Wilson. So if the whole team plays just a little bit better, and Russell Wilson's put in a position where he's not expected to carry the team, then as a unit and Russell Wilson individually will be better in 2023. The next big thing that killed Russ, the run game. And this will be better. To put it simply, Russell Wilson can't be effective without a decent run game behind him. And due to the Javante Williams injury and the Melvin Gordon fumbling apocalypse, this was the biggest problem the Broncos had on offense, not named Russ or the line. Both those backs fumbled on the goal line, week one, costing the team any chance to win. Gordon fumbled sixth it to the Raiders, turning that game on its head. He fumbled on third and one at the goal line, also against the Raiders, taking any momentum out of that game. It was like, holy fuck, man, can we catch a single break? Latavius Murray was the first Broncos running back to have a run longer than 20 yards, and that did not come until November 27th against Carolina. Some offenses can function with the QB throwing the ball, say, 40 times a game and not much out of the run. Not with Russ and not most quarterbacks. Beyond the run not existing or being effective until December, where you actually start to see some improvements uh, in, in gameplay from Russ, the short passing game was completely inept. Screens and swing passes were as effective as a neutered dog producing thoroughbred racehorses. Yeah, I stand by that. They were poorly designed, poorly executed, and Russ relied too heavily on the swing check down when his first read or two wasn't open, and that never helped them. That will change with Sean Payton. Uh, There were two games that Brett Rippon started, a nice victory against a terrible Cardinals team and a bad outing against a good New York Jets defense. I mention Rippon because when the Broncos had a different quarterback under center, the results were the same, if not worse. Rippon got the win in Arizona behind two rushing touchdowns from the backs and just one passing TD. He completed 52% of his passes in that Jets loss and threw a pick. So different QB, same complete lack of production, and more embarrassingly, a loss to Zach Wilson. Russ had a passer rating above 100 five times last season, and Denver won exactly one of those games. So even when he played well, other areas, the run game, or the defense flat out failed. For example, week four, Josh Jacobs gashes Denver for a buck 44 and two rushing TDs. The Raiders scored 32 points, courtesy of that Melvin Gordon fumble six. And that was the first game a team scored more than 17 points on Denver. Uh, Gordon and Javante Williams and Mike Boone combined for 56 rushing yards in that loss. Russ had a passer rating 124.9, throws two touchdowns, Rushes for a touchdowns, but still gets blown the fuck out by a division rival. 
Russ's best game was probably week 14 against the Chiefs at home. It started out horribly. After that, Russ got the team back into the game. He made plays with his legs, got Jerry Judy involved in the passing game, had a huge touchdown from Marlon Mack in the screen game. The rare time that worked. Had he not suffered a concussion late in this game, making a play with his leg, showing he was willing to put his body on the line for the team, Denver probably beats Kansas City. This was the first game that made me think, oh shit, Russ still has it in the tank to be a winning QB. Sucks to say that about a loss and a game that started so bad for him, but this was a vintage Russ game. And finally, it's about adapting to a new reality for Russ. And for him to play well, he has to be a little bit more self-aware and admit that he's not built to carry the team. Russell Wilson asked for a trade out of Seattle and he got exactly what he wanted, but that was not a blessing. It was more of a monkey's paw curling. The trade and the price of the trade on Denver's behalf placed a ton of scrutiny and weight on Russell Wilson's shoulders, and Wilson had been scrutinized before in his career, but never to this degree, and that was a lot to bear. First game, loss against his former team. Then Seattle goes on to secure a playoff spot. They nail the draft picks they got from Denver. Geno Smith makes a Pro Bowl, which makes Russ look like a system QB. And of course, you have the never-ending parade of former Seahawks trashing Russ, calling him corny or weird or a bad leader or all of the above. And of course, they're all jealous because the corniest guy on a Super Bowl winning team got to marry Ciara. So actually, I don't, I don't blame them at all. <laughs> She's doing all sexy too, I like that. <laughs> the Broncos were on national TV for what felt like 80% of the time. Denver lost three overtime games, two were in prime time, and their worst game was on Christmas, where even Jesus asked to have his birthday flexed out. Anytime Russell Wilson played well, nobody was watching. <laughs> Okay, Wilson had some good moments in pressure spots last year. He mounted a touchdown drive to beat the 49ers on Sunday Night Football in week three, but that game was so boring, nobody gave a shit. He came up clutch in the high knee game in London to beat the Jaguars and nearly fought back to come back from 27 to zero against the eventual Super Bowl champions. Of course, one of Wilson's best moments was flexed out of prime time. I say that all, to remind you that there is an adjustment period when QBs change situations. And the Broncos had more change than normal with the head coach and ownership. Hell, Peyton Manning was two and three, staring at two and four in his first five games uh, as, a, as a Bronco. Uh, his adjustment period was quicker because he's Peyton Manning. He had a competent coach and the team that was around him was more talented. But you can look at the same thing when Brady played his first half of the season with Tampa or countless other QBs like Matt Ryan who never found their footing after switching teams for the first time. Russ will have to learn a few things for the first time this season. Like Sean Payton's system, how to fit in uh, more in a team-oriented culture, but those things will eventually make him better. He won't have to relearn moving to a new city, building chemistry with new teammates, or dealing with scrutiny from the media or fans, and he can actually trust his head coach. And of course, he did a really nice job lowering expectations so the Broncos can fly under the radar when they bounce back and make the playoffs in 2023. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Again, I will have a Why Russell Wilson is Definitely Washed video coming out in a couple days. You can compare and contrast and take what you want from either, but please do enjoy.